Many of you wrote to me over the weekend saying, hey, David, did you see Jared Kushner's interview with podcaster Lex Friedman? I don't like Kushner, but he came off as so articulate and knowledgeable. It was actually shocking to see him discuss so many issues so eloquently and articulately with Lex Friedman. Well, I checked out the interview and tell me if this is interesting or useful to you. We're going to go through this because when you look through these segments, these are segments during which Kushner is supposedly demonstrating his expertise. If you really think through what he says, you realize he's lying. He's just making things up. The expertise and the success of the record that he touts and all of this, it's just made up. So this is just one segment. I think the interview was several hours. Here's one segment where Lex Friedman and Jared Kushner talked about um, uh, Biden versus Trump when it comes to the Middle East. That was the topic. Tell me if this is useful. OK, we're going to start going through this and, and I'll tell you the areas in which Kushner. It sounds great, right? Super slick. It just so happens he's lying about everything. Let's take a listen. What has um, the current administration, the Biden administration done different than the Trump administration, as you understand, uh, that may have contributed to the events we saw this week? So. All I can talk about are, are where we left them, right? We left them a place where they had tremendous momentum in the Middle East. Uh, I met with them during the transition and said, you know, look, you know, we, we even got the, um, the Qatar uh, Saudi conflict done, which. OK, let's stop right there. We got the Qatar Saudi conflict done. That's he just mentions it. And Lex Friedman nods. And by the way, I'm not criticizing Lex, Lex Friedman. It's really hard to deal with people who just tell 10 lies a minute. It's genuinely difficult, especially when they lie this con confidently. Here's just an example. OK, Jared Kushner says we got the Qatar Saudi conflict done in January of 2021. Right before Trump left office, the blockade against Qatar was lifted after the Gulf Cooperation Council summit resulted in sort of a reconciliation agreement. It was known as the Al Ula Declaration. Now, Jared Kushner claimed a role in facilitating that resolution. The problems are we don't know whether he had a role and it's really not that big of a deal. So here's the reality. It was a partial resolution of a very long time conflict. The US was one of many parties involved in mediating. There were a ton of other countries involved. There is no evidence one way or the other that Jared Kushner actually had anything to do with it. It was a partial resolution of a conflict which maybe Jared was partially involved in, but we don't actually have evidence. So it, he presents it as, hey, we got Qatar Saudi conflict done. Did you? And was the conflict even resolved? Both answers appear to be uh, probably not. Let's continue. It was a big uh, no peace between Israel and Saudi would have been possible without that. So we even got that done. OK, no peace between Israel and Saudi Arabia would have been possible. And we even got that done. That's just made up. There is no peace deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia. The Abraham Accords included some normalization of relations, which is something Saudi Arabia had been interested in since long before Donald Trump was president, because Prince Mohammed bin Salman recognizes that that would be a good thing for business and financially. Um, it, Jared Kushner is just making stuff up. It, it's just it's completely fabricated. No official deal was made. No peace deal was made. There was just a minor normalization of relations that uh, Saudi Arabia was interested in. And Jared Kushner goes, we got Israeli Saudi peace done. What on earth are you talking about? He's just making stuff up uh, in, in our lame duck period. And um, and they came in and they said, look, we want to focus on the three C's, which is covid, climate change and China. And I said, that's that's great. But, you know, the Middle East, we have an amazing place right now. Uh, it's stable. There's momentum. Uh, Iran is is basically broke. Uh, we put uh, such crippling sanctions on Iran that they went from about I think it was 2.6 million barrels a day of oil they were selling uh, to um, to about 100,000 under Trump. Okay, so he says the situation in the Middle East was stable and Iran was broke. First of all, remember that during the Trump administration, they didn't say that the situation in the Middle East was stable, particularly as it related to Iran. In fact, during the Trump administration, they were insisting hey, Iran is out of control. Iran is belligerently resuming their nuclear weapons development program, which, of course, why were they doing that? Because Trump canceled the Iran nuclear deal just because he didn't like it, even though Iran was abiding by the deal. 
Now suddenly it's everything was stable. He says Iran was broke. Is there a kernel of truth to Iran having economic problems? Yeah. Iran was very much not broke, vast resources, a better economy than many of the countries in the region, engaged in regional and international political and military activity, investing in their strategic roles and proxies in the region. So Iran, everything was stable and Iran was broke. Again, none of it is true. Everything he's saying is a lie. So their their foreign current foreign uh, currency reserves were basically depleted and they were broke. Uh, same with the Palestinians. We stopped the funding to uh, to 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 the to to UNRWA, the UN agency, which is totally corrupt. It's it's you know we've put ten billion dollars in there over time. I did a poll um, in the Middle East in uh, Gaza to say, okay, we've invested ten billion dollars here as a country. Are we popular? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the U.S. had a seven percent approval rating. U.S. AID had a seventy percent approval rating, but. It just felt like a waste of our taxpayer dollars. And again, we wanted to make it conditions based. The Biden administration came in. Uh, number one, uh, they, they, they started insulting uh, you know, Saudi and Russia. Oil prices went up at the same time. OK, Biden insulted Saudi and Russia. And so oil prices went up. I mean, this is just an absurd. Con it's ridiculous on its face. It's just a how do you even debunk that? It's just markets as complicated as oil markets were affected because Biden insulted someone. Time, what they did was they stopped uh, domestic production uh, of oil. Uh, they made it, they disincentivized uh, a lot okay. of. Okay. So there's another lie. Biden stopped domestic production of oil. That is a lie. You can find this information freely. It's public information. Domestic oil production is expected to set a new record this year, 2023, under Joe Biden. It's a, they repeat it. Trump says it. Jared Kushner says it. Biden decreased domestic oil production. It's going up. It's going up. Oil and shale uh, uh, production uh, with regulations. They, they stopped pipelines. Oil prices went up. Um, they stopped enforcing the sanctions against Iran, probably to get the oil prices lower to make up for uh, what they were doing. They ran to Iran to try. All right. So, I mean, listen, it, it's true that Joe Biden put in place a temporary pause on new oil and gas leasing in federal territories while the leasing program was reviewed. That's a lot of ifs, ands and buts. But the pause did not impact existing leases on private lands, which are a significant portion of oil production and oil production went up. So listen, this was like what a, a two hour interview, a 90 minute interview. We just looked at two minutes from a nine minute segment about the Middle East. The entire interview was like this. So how do we fight this? How do we fight such clever propaganda where they send Kushner out, who's articulate, well-spoken and confident and people are impressed, except if you actually fact check each thing he says, you realize that it's lies all the way down. He seems smart and like he was successful while working for Trump's White House because he's making almost all of it up. Let me know if this is useful to you. Um, glad to do more of it, not with this interview, but with other interviews uh, if people want. One of our sponsors today is Deal Dash. Deal Dash is an auction website. It's been around 14 years. You might have seen their ads on TV. Deal Dash only auctions brand new items. You can get incredible deals. A Nintendo Switch sold for $22 recently. Deal Dash auctions anything from iPads to clothing, autograph memorabilia, you name it. And here's how it works. You buy bids up front, for example, 30 bucks for 400 bids. Every auction starts at zero dollars. There's no minimum. And each bid increases the price by a penny. If no one bids only 10 seconds after you bid, you win the auction. I found an awesome chair on Deal Dash that's going to look great in my office. I'm bidding on it right now. It's sort of fun. If you don't win the item, you can use the buy it now feature to buy the item at the listed price and you get your bids back and you have a 90 day money back guarantee on your first bid pack purchase. So try it out. Use my promo code Pacman for 100 free bids with your first bid pack purchase or go to deal dash dot com slash Pacman. The link is down below.